thanks for being back on time. Doesn't always happen. Um, so part two, I think, is sort of dedicated to the soft skills that I believe our students need to be able to practice what we want on an academic level. Um, this is also one of the more difficult things because it's not something the students necessarily believe is directly applicable to their situations, whereas learning how to write a report, which they will be graded in, uh, seems somewhat differently relevant to them, which makes sense. They just don't know yet, at the first semester level at least, that there are many different hurdles that not utilizing soft skills can give the project and have the project not be as good or not be anything. So we talk to them about how to communicate, and typically the reaction is, I know how to communicate. And say, that makes sense, I think you do, but when you are super tired, and you are stressed out, and you have no more resources, then you communicate in a different way. And you need to be aware of this. And you need to have the tools to not piss everybody off. We also teach you to tell them that they should learn a little bit more, maybe, about who they are, how they work, how they don't work, and the fact that people are different from themselves. They tell me, well, we know that. I know that you know, but we will make you better, because you will need it. Say, we don't think we need it. Or people say, oh, that's interesting. But it, both things apply. We also say that they will most likely have an interpersonal conflict with somebody during their studies here because we impose this situation on them where they need to depend on each other to get what they want. Some say, I know how to do this. I am very skilled at it, and some are right, but some are not right. When we hear how people are talking to each other in the group rooms, it is very different. So here, we address the fact that they can potentially piss each other off, and we also give them the tools to how to talk to each other or how to address these things so that when they are in what they would call the shit, they can deal with it. So, um, to sort of test the limitations, I typically give them a couple of videos, um, simple awareness tests, because they, as I said before, our students tend to, some of the students tend to not believe in themselves enough, and some of them tend to believe in themselves too much. So, for those who tend to believe in themselves too much, I sort of give them these uh, small videos to highlight that we are just people and that we miss things. Uh, so let's see if this works. Some of you might know these. And <coughs> How many passes does the team in white make?
tell you, one does not plant petunias until May is out of the way. It's just a matter of observation. The real question is how observed were you? Somebody in this room murdered Lord Smythe, who, at precisely 3.34 this afternoon, was brutally bludgeoned to death with a blood instrument. I want each of you to tell me your whereabouts at precisely the time that this dastardly deed took place. I was polishing the brass in the last bedroom. I was buttering his orchard's goes, though I stared at something. But I was plunging my petunias in the bottom chair. Constable, arrest Lady Smythe. <laughs>
and how can you use it? Why should you place yourself in this matrix of different personality types? That you get one personality type doesn't mean that you should be boxed in and that's who you are. No, no, it can change. But it is a way for the students to relate to it. And we force them to relate to it in that way, to optimize their group work, to optimize their understanding of what's going on on a better level, and to be able to address it. Uh, no, Let me ask you to use Again, build a team, uh, team role inventory. Here you have all these types of team roles and what they contribute to a project with. And we have students relate to what is in their groups. They take a test where they get their own profile. What do they have and what don't they have? That will probably make it very easy to describe what's going on in the group role, why certain processes are being taken care of very well, while other processes are not. If students want to optimize their product flow, they should be aware that some of that having huge gaps might hurt their product. And that's the learning styles that I talked about before. Um, it is tough if you have two opposites, goal opposites in groups or in a group where they basically speak the different, the different language. I've tried that on eight semester where I had to spend I think 24 hours which with one of my roommates, three days before handing, to rewrite a chapter that we had been working on together because we realized we had completely different um, perceptions of what it was. We've been talking to each other, but completely besides each other, so we needed to find some sort of common ground. And I think that you know, knowing how people take in information is super important. So there are fully integrated characterizations of posting learning styles, and uh, again, it is to make students think. It's not to tell them who they are, or it's to just give them an indication of who they are, but also tell them that you know it might not be the most accurate representation right now, it might be because you're in a certain mood, and over time it can change. But for me, for instance, it over time has these are these are open source. But it has challenged my way of thinking, and I've, I've gradually from when I was a student first coming to the AU until now I've moved quite a bit. Um, for instance, I had an 11 on the, on, the back, on, the, on the last one to the right. I was completely global, and now I'm moving into the center because I know that I figured out that it doesn't help me being that extreme. So I need to practice being more sequential to be able to take things one step at a time instead of having to see the whole big picture and, and, and immediately navigate it. So it's a good conversation. It's a good conversation about how we work and how other people work, and that we're all different. So we're telling them that they're building their profile. We're also talking to them about how to listen to each other. Because in a group room, we see a lot that students, some students are waiting for the time to speak. They're not really hearing what other people say. So we give them bullet points and understandings uh, through conversation and uh, through, some, through some exercises um, on how to be this active listener profile. Here are a couple of points. Um, let's say the person talking, eye contact with the person talking, communicates in the grounds of the person talking, keeps his own opinions and ideas in the background. Those is relevant and avoiding in the questions, avoids leading questions, shows respect for the opinion of the person talking, etc. So these are all very nice things. Um, and if we do that, it's why we have nice things. But um, practicing it is where it becomes slightly difficult. And keeping, keeping that profile, putting the profile into the group, making a culture around this is the difficult part. Because it's so easy just to get in and just start talking. We give them an exercise to the, uh, um, opens their eyes quite a bit on how difficult it actually is. So we ask them to bring an unsolved personal issue, something that they wouldn't mind sharing, but they don't have a specific solution to. Then we put them into small groups, three roles. One presents the problem, one is the owner of the problem. The other one acts as an active listener, and then there's an observer. So the active listener cannot give their opinion. They cannot say anything. They can only ask. And they have to do that for 10 minutes, helping to understand, helping the, of the presenter, um, by asking questions to solve the, the issue, but also just helping themselves understanding the issue. And typically what happens is that the center and the problem itself move to a completely different area than everybody expected, that the uh, content of the issue is explored in a much greater depth than anybody had, in the, had, had expected. And, uh, and also, and this is maybe the key finding, 
and for all people that not putting your opinion on the table for 10 minutes is near impossible. Only 10 minutes? I mean, you have a break for 15. It's not a long time. But it is a super long time for many of us. And some students realize that in this, in this exercise and gain some respect for why the other points we have here are relatable, very easily relatable, but very difficult to practice. Then we also have another like, character called Team Player, which is about, about how to make contributions to enhance discussion. And again, these are not these are very logical, but it is sort of a bullet list that if something goes wrong in the group, you can push this bullet list and you can start analyzing the group by saying, how are we proposing? Are we seeking information through questions? Are we providing information? Are we summing up discussions? What are we actually doing? Are we acting as this team player kind of person, kind of thing? And usually, when there are issues, people are not. Or when the project drags out, people are not. So then this is added to the profile that we're sort of trying to build up to be able to facilitate the learning. This is not about you know, us building up uh, mediators or anything. We're just trying to give the students tools that they can use to increase their academic potential. We talked to them about supervisor. Who is a supervisor? Uh, what is it? A supervisor that they do? What is a supervisor not? So a supervisor not part of the group. I mean, I, I as a supervisor will not make decisions for the group. I will challenge their opinions and I will challenge their decisions if I think that's necessary. But I will also um, support the decisions. But my, 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 biggest, my biggest point is to, to question and challenge um, and to guide. Um, and then students need to be aware of this, but also that it is actually our job to help them. Um, I think a lot of students in the beginning are at least um, a bit fearful of contacting the supervisor with any student questions. So we need to have that conversation very quickly for them to realize that it is actually it is actually a relationship that should be comfortable and, uh, and helpful. Then we discuss what is a good collaboration and we also discuss then uh, setting up some rules. Yeah, I also was the same. No, they're not. You need to sort of figure out how your supervisor takes. Um, and that can be a, an issue itself. But um, yeah, this is what I wanted to come to. We um, encourage them to make agreements, documents, preferably in the beginning, so they open up the conversation, both about how they work themselves, but also how they what they can expect from the supervisor. Let's say that you send a document to your supervisor and you expect feedback, but you haven't really discussed when you can expect to have feedback or when you can expect, when you, when it's, when is it okay that you send an email to the supervisor, you know, reminding them that, that you, you sent some stuff, because you don't want to piss off the supervisor. As a student, of course, the supervisor will evaluate the project, and we all know how it goes. They should be professional. We should all be. But if you really hate somebody, it takes a little bit more effort. And if students are being, well, I've not had many annoying students, but I have had had a few that it has been really difficult to be in the same room with. And of course that makes everything more difficult. Students know this. So they are fearful of pissing off the supervisor. That's why it's good to have an agreement. Do we agree that we can actually send you a black mail after 48 hours asking if you receive the mail, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All these things are nice, nice to have in writing, so it's clear for everybody and it's not interpreted. For groups, these are points that we give them that they can consider, like when to show up, how to deal with deadlines, how to communicate, uh, where do your expectations lie, um, how do you make documentation of the things, who's responsible for what. I mean, and these are not even, I mean, this is the top of the iceberg. Again, we don't require them to have this, we just want them to think. to be conscious of how to organize this stuff. And if they're conscious of, say, well, if, if, they, if they're conscious of saying, well, you don't want to organize anything, it works. 
And it does I'm not I'm saying like, oh, you should have a human, you should have a dog and not your approval. No, it's fine. But they should know that it exists and that it statistically helps more people than it hurts. Just what if the group work is not upheld? We see this uh, more than we want. Um, not because, well, okay. We see students want this very quickly sometimes because they do end up having disagreements. We also see how uh, consultation and mediation of the issues and having them work with these tools that I'm showing a little bit of now typically helps out a lot. In the beginning, they're very bad at practicing them, so we help them. They become increasingly better at solving their own things, but we go in quite a lot if there are issues and try to help them out. We force this one on them as much as possible so that they don't just go from one to a hundred and suddenly, suddenly want to kick somebody out without the person even knowing that there was a problem. That has happened quite a few times. So we force them to have meetings, at least three meetings, one internally, another one with a supervisor, and then a final one with a supervisor, where the person who has, who the group believes has something to improve, has a chance to improve. And then only in the end if the supervisor says, okay, you've done what you can, will the group get out of it? That is how, I mean, I think there is no one way of doing this at AU. This is what, this is the culture that we are trying to, to build a meteorology uh, and that the seat. Um, and I think, it's, I think it makes sense because otherwise it becomes way too quick. We've seen students just, you know, basically freeze out a person overnight. And that doesn't work. It doesn't work for us either. Financially, it's a that disaster that we're suddenly left with uh, double the amount of groups that we had in the beginning as supervisors and then double the amount of projects, double the amount of uh, exams. Just because they're half the people doesn't mean that the projects become half the size. They do sometimes end up being half the quality, but that makes it even more difficult. So we would like we, we, we do like to manage this to a certain extent. Project management, well speaking of what I just talked about, is quite important. It is a quite important skill. It is to a certain extent about having students avoid conflict before it starts. And again, this thing about you know the the awareness tests, you know, the students are typically these things will creep up, up on you if you don't realize that they can come from you know many places. And it's sort of simple, but it's complicated, right? Two opposing parties that has the perception of what's on that. Yeah, so this is a I give to students just to say it's not nice. And it is not nice. And we've seen very many students be very isolated and not have a very nice time. Um, yeah, so these are examples of why would they have give these to students. So these are, of course, of course generic, generically written uh, descriptions. And at the point in time where we introduce it, some groups have tried to have a little bit of an experience with some of these. Of course, some come with baggage from before university. Um, but what we talk about is to try to get familiar with, at least as good it is, um, to sort of see the patterns quickly. And also realize that either they can engage themselves or they can ask for help. Because <coughs> it's way, way easier to fix it when it's not a real big problem. Um, 
students sitting crying in front of each other because they've just become they they've they've, they've taken it too far, and then it's it's very 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 difficult to solve it for the supervisor or the consultant. Sometimes they do solve. It. They do sit there and cry, and they um, they end up going into a nice conversation about what is being going on. But if they can recognize this from getting my job done, I, mean, I will do that. We give them some sort of idea. You know, what are these steps? What are the points in the return? So yeah, we spend quite a lot of talk, time talking about it. And I also tend to bring in a lot of video examples of different ways of addressing the same thing, different perspectives on the same thing. Both to not have them hear my voice all the time, but also I know the video is very visual, they're very narrative driven, so video examples make a lot of sense. And it is time spent with people explaining different sides of the same thing. And recently I'm hearing that the students are actually trying, they're starting to apply this in the area of their life. That actually has made such an impression on them that these techniques are something that they're starting to inherit and just practice now. Which is, I mean, I couldn't be happy. So let's hope that that's it being put into the projects. Another example of Another example of how to approach conflict, etc. Et um, yeah, I, I won't waste time with this, but I'm just showing this um, as examples of the different ways we try to address the same thing, try to look at perspectives, try to challenge the understanding of what is going on. Um, and then we give them this. So, why do you think I have a not rocket science, but it is difficult when you are emotionally affected. That's what we all try to do. None of these things are complicated or rocket science. It's very difficult to control yourself when you're angry. So again, this profile of going about things in the end of the lecture, in the course for us, we then put them all together uh, in a sequence that I'm not going to bore you with, but where we sort of apply all the different feats, uh, features of of different roles or different profiles that we're trying to, that we're trying to teach. Um, 
to solve a situation where an angry blue member just loses his mind. Just to show them how could it be, how could we envision that these things are taken into consideration? At which stage uh, do you want to deflate the situation, etc., etc. And then we return to the PDL statements in the end, saying, what do you think that you had six months or five months? Um, you can go through a lot of different things. Um, how, do you, how do you see PDL now? Often it's slightly different. Those experiences we ask them to put into deliverables, which we call the process analysis. So when the, pro when the project report is the project told in its most logical fashion, um, not necessarily the way the project was actually built, but the way that is the most easy to explain, we have to focus on the process, not the project. How did we work together? How have we been improving our learning? based on how we learn and how we prefer to take in information and how we prefer to work. How do we manage time? Could we have improved something? So all this meta layer going into working on projects, we force them to reflect upon. And actually, for in many cases, this has quite a bit of weight in terms of what grade they get. We have them do it on the first and second semester. On the first semester, there are two projects, so three actually three projects in the first year, and three process analyses. So we talk about the pro processes, what an analysis should be, that it's not about the project. Um, these are the points that we ask them to relate to. So project planning and management, cooperation in the group, cooperation with supervisors, which can also typically be vastly improved. Participation in courses, what does that even mean? Um, we want to have them reflect on that because they always like the project because they can put themselves into it and that means the courses sometimes become, become neglected but that's not really a good idea so we need to address that and we typically have that address it in the process analysis and then we talk about it at the exam typically we also see the report which courses were neglected and then we talk about that in the exam as well and that will of course affect the grade as it should because courses should support the project and then of course, so the pillars I would guess would be cooperation, how do they work together, how do they learn, and how do they manage the project. We give them these types of headlines in more detail. Group dynamics, team roles, etc. So the well, things I've already talked about in the presentation. How they analyze their own learning, based on theory we give them. How do they manage the projects? They should explain how they did it and they should reflect on whether they could improve it and in which areas and what possibly would be the consequence of improving these things. So both the description and analysis and a reflection. So all these types of ways of looking at the same thing which I give them to inspire their thinking. How do they manage this triangle between quality, time, and cost? That's something we talked about in the lectures also. That you can always, always can improve quality, but then it will take more time or cost more money. And what do they have? How do they manage the resources according to their expectations? And that will even for the scope of the project. So all these things are things that they can take. We do tell them. Focus on what's important for your project. We don't want you to describe a lot of things that are not really interesting. We want you to focus your time and your space in the process analysis on things and subjects and topics and processes that are actually interesting and why something is happening. When learning 